Hey guys, my name is Jonah Battle, and today I will be talking about housing for giant canyon isopods. Now, um, this kind of encompasses like all, I mean, a lot of tropical um, isopods. So, uh, just giant canyon isopods are the type that I got. I got mine from Glass Box Tropics. Trop Gla Gla Glass Box Tropical. I think something like that and um, not that you have to like buy I'll, I'll probably put a I might yeah I'll put a link in the description you don't have to buy from there but if you're looking to get isopods that's where I got mine they're expensive but definitely well worth it and they breed a lot so I'll show you the different terrariums that I have mine in and um, luckily I just cleaned one of my terrariums really really it looks really nice now so uh, I'll show you that. Also, I'll show some simpler systems to keep them in as well. So obviously, I'm going to start with my iguanas cage here. Um, it's really cool. One of my favorite terrariums because it's huge. And by huge, I mean around uh, 110 gallon size, but it's homemade, made out of wood and um, custom background and everything, really cool. So. Uh, obviously you can have it on a huge scale like this where all of these all of this is just terrarium um, for the iguana right there and uh, this whole thing I think it's around six inches of dirt or less something like that six probably a range from like six to four to three or something like that and um, probably housing I should probably talk about so the mix is basically normal eco earth so basically any type of cocoa fiber bedding type of thing mixed in with uh, some mulch like just plain mulch uh, mixed in with just normal topsoil that you'd get at a uh, landscaping company um, my dad works for a landscaping company and I've said this in videos before so that's where I got uh, the mulch and the dirt and then also like a tiny bit of sand just to kind of mix in and also obviously wood and stuff like that like this in here um, and there's rocks and plants and everything live plants so here there's one right away right under here so you can see down there running away but um that's what these giant canyon isopods are living in and springtails live in here and my guana lives in here and maybe darkling beetles it's a possibility so this is just one example there we go there's some right there and why why i'm here i'm gonna collect some real quick okay it's kind of hard to see but this is what i'm gonna try to do so I'm going to collect some while I'm here because in my gecko's cage, it's mainly eco-earth, sadly, um, which I need to, I'm going to mix it in with some other types of substrate when I redo his enclosure, but at the moment, it's mainly eco-earth, but there's not really um, any isopods in there. I kind of need to seed it better, so I'm going to collect some if I can find any. They're kind of hard to catch since they are so small. So these are obviously not the bigger. They're, they're, they are called giant canyon isopods for a reason. Trust me, they can get pretty big. And I might be able to show some footage of that um, right about now. Right there, I'm going to put it in the gecko's cage. And that was from a different video that I just filmed a, like a second earlier um, where I found a bigger one. Uh, why I was making a different video. So I'm going to catch some more and then I will add these in later in this video. Here's one of the terrariums that I like a lot um, as well. It may be even more to a certain extent because I can work with it a lot, keep other plants in it because my guana is a herbivore so I have to put only safe plants in him up in, in um, this enclosure. That's why I have aloe vera and bamboo. But in here I have like peace lily, snake plant, um, some questionable or mystery ivy that I don't really know what it is, which is right there. And then also pothos as well. Um, 
to basically none of the planes that I can put in with him. Um, and in here I just have this, and this has a ton of isopods. They're all kind of hiding right now because I was just messing around with the, uh, the le leaf litter and uh, kind of moving it around so they all kind of just went and hid. But the, I see them every once in a while. They'll just be crawling around. It's really cool. And this is the same type of substrate. Then over here, this is mainly eco-earth in my gecko's enclosure. And this has some as well. It's basically the same uh, type as the rest of them. It also has some isopods in it. This one doesn't really have as many isopods. There's the gecko right there. And um, it's mainly eco-earth, um, a lot of it. Which I think it's kind of funny how people say, like, you need to have a drainage layer and you can't just keep plants on e in eco-earth because there's not enough whatnot or whatever. Um, explain to me this. This terrarium that has all these plants growing real nice and green and there's no drainage layer because I didn't feel like putting one in and it's basically just eco-earth and they grow really well. Granted, all, all of these plants can just grow straight in water so um, that's probably why if there was something that needed more drainage. But this doesn't have a drainage layer either and those are um, aloe vera plants down there which are a type of succulent. So again, like I said, um, I don't know how much, uh, that's like absolute, uh, here are the, all the isopods that I found, and it was actually really fun to catch these, because I have a terrarium in my room, and I was literally catching bugs out of it to use, which are, which is just kind of a really cool thing to do, so I'm gonna drop all these in, and I dropped, like I think I showed you, I dropped a, um, I dropped that bigger one in here as well because I need to seed this. So let's just watch down here. I just dump them all in. And then if my gecko ever finds one of these, then he would probably eat it, which is just fine. Uh, so you can see, and then a lot of the other ones went back there. And I've put in some big ones in here before. Whenever I find a big one in one of the other terrariums, then I'll put it in here. But I'd like to get this terrarium really going. Um, even now, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be taking all the dirt out of the bottom, even now, uh, I mean, if I do do that, I'm still going to use that for a different terrarium, so it's fine if it has isopods in it. And that's kind of the nice thing, if you, even if you don't have a terrarium, you can still keep isopods, and, um, even if you have to take down a terrarium, you don't have to, like, throw away the dirt or anything like that. You can still keep them really easily in a system like this down here. So these aren't isopods, these are actually millipedes, but it's the same basic idea. And hopefully, I haven't checked on this since I set it up, hopefully it's not all moldy. I guess we're about to find out. But this is just a bunch of, it is not. Um, this is just a bunch of wood and leaves, and let's see if I can find any of the animals that live in here. Um, there we go. You can see them there. So these are banded millipedes, and they're really similar to um, uh, the you know how to keep an isopod as well. You could keep it in a small container like this, and there's actually a cricket right there. I think I knew that. Um, I think I put a cricket in here as well, and. This is pretty cool. I just feed it lettuce. As you can see, they've been munching away at the lettuce. And hopefully they'll be breeding. And they're just something that... They're actually from Cuba. I found them in Florida, though. So um, they're kind of invasive there. Not really hurting anything. But they're not, you know, native there. They're brought there somehow. Um, so I took some from Florida and I kept them. So then also another system could be like this if you wanted to go on a bigger scale and maybe breed them or something like that, but you didn't really ha want to have a terrarium for them. You could keep them in something like this, which this is not. This is a tubular roach enclosure um, with lots of uh, food and stuff in it for the tubular roaches. And I'll spare you uh, opening up one of these egg cartons, but they're in there. But you could keep it in something like this and just have um, 
you know, like three, four inches of dirt in there and just feed them. Um, well, if you want to know what to feed them, go back and watch last week's video that I did last Tuesday about what to feed them. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, like it down below. If you have any comments or concerns, put in the comments below. And if you want more content, then subscribe. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Sorry, I just didn't do that really quick.